Okay guys, so uh, third session was about struts, config files, and validation. Now the thing is that this has the configuration files which is being described here. Many of those configuration files we have already dealt with in, the, in our earlier examples. So this will also serve as a sort of a recap, a revision for you guys. Now the very important XML. Uh, is obviously struts uh, dot xml uh, right it has all the configuration information it should be in the class path all the action class details are there in this particular struts dot xml okay so this file you're already aware of this is very very important this is one of the configuration files and if you see the root uh, tag here starts with struts and inside that you have many package attributes so it's not necessary that you only have one package section you can have many package sections okay and these package sections can have multiple action classes so package is basically for modularization i mean you can have like say uh, five teams one team working on registration one team working on say a different component such as member center a different team working all together on order module etc etc so you have different components out there and you have given different sections to work on them so they can give you different package elements and in the final struts.xml you can directly incorporate one package for registration team another package for uh, order team another package for member center team so all these things can be accommodated together okay so package is basically for modularization all right and uh, yes so that's how it is now so I just read what is out here root, root tag is struts inside this we have many package tags package tag helps in modularization of the application and as I say we can have different modules and we can have different package elements within that particular XML okay now let's go and we'll discuss about the attributes which this package can have right so you see this package had the name extends whether it is abstract or not not and the namespace bar now the name is mandatory so the package name which was being defined earlier is user or if you will let's go here and see what was in the struts.xml this particular example right so you, i have the package name as user okay so name is important you need to have a name to identify it uniquely all right just to identify it uniquely otherwise it's not important it's it's not used as such you can have user, you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, username, but the name is mandatory, you cannot avoid that particular attribute. Okay, so it is required. Now the next one is extends. So the thing is that one package can extend any other package as well. So unless you give anything, like say you uh, you give anything by default, I mean any other package name. Uh, you by default extend the struts have a default package name okay and struts have a default has some of the basic implementations some of the basic uh, uh, things which can be used by the packages which we are having so that's why even though it's optional you'll find in many places we extend struts are default like the way in which I have done here this extends struts hyphen default okay now this abstract so you can also mark your uh, package as abstract and if it is marked like abstract is equal to true it means that uh, as a user as an end customer if I cannot use it right uh, it can only be used for extension it can only be used by it can only be extended by other uh, package names other packages and you can use those packages but not this one okay so this is just an abstract way to give a proper structure hierarchy etc to the other packages which are available but this one as such is not to be used okay now the other attribute is namespace okay so namespace is basically you can say that I mean if you want to say a uh, use and if you do not define it, it's again optional. There is nothing required here. So the thing is that you can have the way in which you can define your uh, your URL is let's say just for an example.
see how you can define it. So a typical web application has a context root, okay, which in our case, like if you see this example, is name of the project. Okay. Now after that, just a second. So after that, what is the namespace defined here? You can use that one too. So in this case, in our case, the namespace defined, which I defined was slash word. So we see, and I think it will be open still. See, I am accessing it using slash word, right? Because the namespace is slash word. So you have context root slash namespace slash name of the action, and this is dot action is by default. Okay, so instead it's two by default, it was dot do. Here, uh, sorry, instead it's one. Here it is dot action. There it was dot do d o. Okay, so that's how it is out here. So this namespace is. I mean, you can define a different. I mean, basically it denotes that they can define a different uh, URL for it. So after context, you can have the namespace. You can then you will have the action name dot action class. And if it is not, if you do not define this one, then I mean the slash work is not required. You can actually access it without slash work. I mean uh, just slash registration slash welcome dot action. If you do not define the namespace, but if you define, that is also that also has to be used. Okay. So these are the elements for the package attribute. Now, uh, any questions till now? Any questions till now? Other folks, did you understand it? Yes, I'll repeat namespace. Anything else? So namespace is just, I mean, you can understand, giving a separate way to access that particular package. And the separate way to access that particular package is to give a different URL. So how that is accommodated in the present URL structure is that you have this uh, localhost colon 8080 or www.google.com or www.amazon.com, any of the web URL which mix, which hits our particular application server. And after that you have the corresponding action classes. So it means that you have slash Con, uh, slash context root okay which in our case was slash registration then after that if uh, what I said was that it's a way to give a separate way to access that particular package element so here you define that you access using slash well that is what was defined in the struts.xml so that is defined it means that the separate way to access this package is by giving slash well after the context root. So that's what we're doing. So if you have HTTP localhost colon 8080, then you have slash registration, then slash well, and then after that you give the action name, which is defined within this particular package element. So you can give slash welcome dot action, or you can give slash save data and dot action. That is up to your requirement. But that how that's how it works. Uh, did I answer your question, Shaila? Did you understand it? Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions, guys? Okay, so let me move forward. Now, inside this package element, you have this action element, right? So uh, you can have, uh, which basically denotes action classes. And you can have number of action classes. The action classes will have attributes the way package was having they have their own attribute so let's see one action tag so this action tag which i have it has a name it has the class and it has another sub tag okay so the idea is that which you, the way in which you want to access this action class that is the name which you want to put here the name has significance here uh, and this is a bit different from the name of the package the name of the package was just for I define that particular package uniquely. There is no much uh, use for it, but in the case of action class, there is use for it. We use that particular uh, name. The welcome name is being used. The save data name is being used. Okay, and the second was class. So class basically, if you uh, give here, 
and that is the action class that can be a pojo where you have this execute method or you can extend the action to pojo etc it's up to your requirement Okay, but it is optional. So if you do not give it by default, the action support class will be used. I mean, the one which is already by default coming along with struts to core dot jar, and the same is being, and the same execute method is being used. Okay, so that's how uh, I mean this works. So let's go back and recap from here. You have a name attribute which is mandatory in this case because it is being used to access that particular action class. But the class name as such is optional. If you do not define any class yet, by default the action support class will be used. And inside this action tag, you have this result tag. Okay. And this result tag specifies where you want to forward the request to. So if you have, like, say, let's go back. If you have, say, success, or if you have failure, then uh, from this execute method, you always return this string which is basically the name of the result whether you want to move to success or failure or if any of the results uh, result you have defined here so if that is the case then in then i mean uh, uh, you can use a result tag the name has to be used of whatever is being sent from the action class and then the type is optional there's one type dispatcher which just means that you have to dispatch the request to that particular jsp and that is what we normally do so it is not required as such, that's why it's not mentioned anywhere. But if you want, you can mention the type as dispatcher, not a problem. Now, coming below, so till now you have, uh, like say, you have one package element, right? And it ha it is being accessed using slash verb. But the same stuff, you can, uh, you want to access using different namespaces, right? So using slash work slash one or slash work one slash work two the same package should be available. So if that is the case, you can repeat the same package element number of times, but but with different namespaces. So what I mean to say is that if you have this, so the slash work one. Let me go below. slash work to so you can have different namespaces defined for the same set of action classes so I mean this is also possible and then your URL to access it will change it will become slash work one slash welcome dot action or slash work to slash welcome dot action so it depends on the namespace you can have different namespaces catering to the same action classes but to achieve that you need to define separate sections here in the struts dot XML okay and that's what i mentioned here as well we can define multiple namespaces in struts.xml file we just have to repeat the same package element number of times with different namespace names all right now coming back to web.xml now this web.xml you know that web.xml has to have an entry for the filter and as explaining earlier so this is the latest one which you use struts prepare and execute filter the older one the filter dispatcher is still being supported nobody uses it these days so this is what i've mentioned we have to define filter in web.xml this filter will take care of using struts.xml file and filter or dis filter dispatcher i showed one of the examples earlier was used in early developments right now it is deprecated we have to use uh, struts prepare and execute filter going forward okay so now you have one uh, struts uh, hyphen default dot properties and that comes uh, uh, inside the struts core you know, jar, and it is already there. It has number of fe uh, features for uh, internationalization, etc. If you want to override them, then you have to name the file as struts or properties, and then use it. So the struts or properties, whatever values you give, that those values will override whatever is there in the struts hyphen defaulted properties in the struts code jar okay so again to recap so the struts or property file is used to affect the default behavior of the struts framework and uh, uh, you have a default properties file if you want to override this behavior then you have to create and it has to be the same name struts dot property it should be in the class path you can put it in as rc sources 
that should be okay okay now you can also have multiple configurations files in the strut.xml all right so the thing is that like say uh, you want like whenever you had teams you do not want to like even add the package elements from there you just wanted to give them the strut.xml and wanted to include it so that's the way it has been done here so you have this include file where you are giving the struts first xml and struts second xml references and then it will be used so inside the struts first xml you have uh, you have it defined here i mean say the package name and then struts second xml the same thing is defined the different package name is defined so there are different uh, like the package elements which are available you can have different uh, struts files, struts.xml files for it and then you can refer them from the main struts.xml file as was being done here. So these are for the struts xml configuration files and I think most of them you already have seen as well in your uh, last classes. But anyways I just wanted to check whether you understood till now, you have any problems or you want to repeat something. Guys, do you understand? Okay, thank you. What about others? Did you guys understand? Guys, let's be more proactive. When I was asked, right, just let me know when as it is possible. I think you understand. Raghav, do you understand? And you can ping me as well, not a problem. Shravan, do you understand? Okay, thank you. And when you ask, right, if you give me like immediate inputs, I can go forward, otherwise, stop the uh, course for some time. But anyway, so what I was thinking is that we'll give a logical break here because starts to validation again. I mean, I'll start in between and then we'll have to leave it. So uh, let's stop here for today. Uh, I mean, uh, as far as this discussing is concerned, uh, meanwhile, we'll like I'll ask few questions and then we'll see. Okay, so let me start. So, guys, it's a question for all of you now. The struts to framework, and you have a normal web application. Now, what changes do you do in your current web application to make it struts to enabled? Correct, but what is the entry in the web?